Hi, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. I train and equip leaders like yourself to do church tech and event production with excellence. Lighting is a great topic, and after this video, you're gonna have a much better understanding of DMX, how it works, and what you can do with it. A lighting universe is simply a block of 512 controlled channels in the DMX protocol. Whether sent over a three or five pin cable, or over the network using protocols such as ArtNet or SACN. Ultimately, the 512 DMX channels on a single universe allow users to control a bunch of different parameters on each lighting fixture from the lighting desk or from software that can communicate with the DMX protocol. This is a dumb light fixture. It uses one channel of the 512 channels in the universe that it's connected to, and that channel has a value between zero and 255 to turn the fixture from off to full brightness. This RGB fixture has three parameters utilizing three channels, each with a value from zero to 255, but blending the intensity of these three channels causes the fixture to produce any color the three channels being red, green, and blue, turning the first channel on to 255 and the other two at zero, red, same with green, same with blue. This smart moving light fixture uses 18 channels on its minimum setting and can do RGB plus intensity, plus pan, plus tilt, plus zoom. All of this extra functionality requires all these extra channels, which is why it's 18 channels in its minimum mode. LED strip tape like this uses hundreds of channels and requires lots more management in software, such as Resolum Arena, which has no problem pushing content to hundreds of universes and tens of thousands of LEDs. My 16, 14, and 12 foot stained glass window stage design that I built this year utilizes over 17,000 pixels with lots of packs of LED tape. Think of it like seats on a bus. You only have 512 seats in a single bus, single universe. A single non-color light takes one seat. An RGB light takes three seats. A moving light with 18 parameters takes 18 seats. Each pixel in an LED strip takes three seats, which adds up to hundreds of seats gone instantly. The good news is that we can add buses to our fleet the same way we add universes to our lighting system. This is one of my Chave Parquad 18 fixtures. The back of each of these fixtures has two different DMX ports, three pin and a five pin DMX for both inputs and outputs. Three versus five pin is just about the connector port. DMX actually only uses three pins even on the five pin connector. So it's a waste to use five pin wire. It's even a waste to use a five pin connector, but a lot of high end units fixtures will utilize the five pin connector and then a lot of the lower budget stuff uses the three pin connector. But the standard was originally five pin and then the three pin showed up as a cheaper option. It's a whole thing, but just note that either one works. Some fixtures you can actually even convert. So you input three pin DMX and then you connect five pin DMX as your output to the next fixture. So it'll convert between three to five pin on the input and output or the output to the input. The last thing we need to connect is power in and power out via our PowerCon connectors. This DMX cable is coming from our lighting controller board, so I'll connect this DMX to the very first fixture via the three pin DMX input. Now to connect a second fixture, I'm going to daisy chain the DMX out from the first fixture to the DMX in on the second fixture. Then I'm also gonna daisy chain the power from the out port on the first fixture to the in port on the second fixture, continuing this all the way to the last fixture. You can see now how good planning is key when designing a stage design with things such as lighting universe distribution taken into account. If you keep connecting fixtures together, you will eventually run out of control channels and need to start from a second port on the lighting board, or you're gonna need a new power source. The user manuals for each fixture will show you how many fixtures can be daisy chained together on a single 15 or 20 amp circuit. The DMX protocol is not only used to control lighting fixtures, but different software can be controlled using this protocol. If you have enjoyed this video so far, then check out this other video where I show you how to control ProPresenter from your lighting software over DMX, or control Resolum Arena from the lighting software. 
Stage lighting has changed a lot since the DMX protocol was created. With modern computers and controllers, it would probably not be a problem to increase DMX universes beyond the 512 channels, but this limitation keeps the refresh rates high and data moving well. Deploying network nodes, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, is super easy across your lighting system. Some fixtures do utilize ethernet to connect the fixtures directly to your network, but most stage lights still rely on three or five pin DMX cables to daisy chain the data between each of these fixtures. In a theater setting, there are multiple bars of lights hanging above the stage. Let's say that each bar filled with fixtures has a single universe going to it. This works because each fixture is daisy chained together and the first fixture is connected with a DMX cable that goes along the power cable back to a DMX node. A DMX node is a device that has a bunch of DMX ports on it. It can be rack mounted and each port is a single universe. So each port, the wire runs to a different bar of lighting fixtures on our stage. Now we connect an ethernet cable from our network to this node and our lighting software can now communicate with the node, sending universes to this node. Depending on the size of the system you're building, you can have a bunch of DMX nodes or just one DMX nodes that all of the DMX goes to and then gets connected over the network. If you just want a simple DMX node that you can send ArtNet data to from your lighting software and then it'll convert it to DMX that you can plug into your lighting fixtures, I would recommend checking out the Entech ODE Mark III, which can output two universes of five pin to DMX fixtures. And if your fixtures are three pin, that's okay. It's very easy to get converters from five pin to three pin or from three pin back to five pin. You can also very reliably do wireless DMX through a device called a Show Baby, which has a five pin port on it, but you could easily convert to three pin. These are very nice and very reliable to use. Once you connect this Entec Octo Mark III to the network, you can send ArtNet or SACN control protocols to it from your lighting controller or software, then connect a few fixtures from this one device. My church uses Vista 3 by ChromaQ for our lighting. We own a hardware control surface which connects to the computer via USB and allows us to have physical buttons for controlling the lights. But we still use the screen on the computer for simple tasks like picking colors. On my church's Vista S3 hardware controller that we have, it has four five pin DMX ports to connect to our lights, but we only have one license that is one universe, so 512 channels total. Vista does a really nice thing where you can use any channels across any universes as long as it doesn't add up to above the license key, which is really awesome. So we have our lights spread out across our four outputs, but we're not going over our one license. Selling channels and universes seems to be how these lighting platforms companies make their money. Light Key is very popular as an entry level software, but it's subscription based and their pricing page shows that you can buy a license in blocks of half a universe, one universe, two universes and 16 universes. My church uses Vista 3 and their pricing is even crazier, which is why we only have the single universe. Let's talk about lighting systems because most of them are like our Vista 3 by ChromaQ. They sell these hardware control surfaces, which allows users to connect the Vista software from a physical surface. The software always runs on the computer, but we can connect our surface to the computer to authenticate licenses and to use the IO ports on the control surface and to give ourselves physical knobs and buttons because those are really nice to have. These surfaces like ours often have those five pin DMX ports on them to output universes of lights to fixtures from the surface. So often this is the first place that people start with connecting fixtures to their physical control surface and then later on they move to adding a network node. If you are trying to figure out how your own system works, this is a good place to start looking on the back of your control surface and figuring out where those wires are running to your lighting fixtures. It's also possible if you're using a network node from your controller that there's an ethernet cable going straight to the node from the control surface and you don't necessarily have to connect it to the network. 
If you do decide to connect your node and your lighting system to the larger production network, just make sure that everything has a static IP addresses are set to DHCP or they're given new static IP addresses that work with the overall network. Once your controller and node are connected to the larger network, now you're gonna be able to send and receive more data from other devices utilizing ArtNet and SACN over standard ethernet switches. Now you can use your lighting control system to control Resolum Arena from your lighting console. So for example, we control Resolum Arena from our Vista 3 setup. Resolum is mostly designed for slices and LED walls, but I use it for driving high pixel counts of LEDs like my stained glass window stage design at the church that I was telling you about. This thing is pushing 100 universes of data to about 17,000 LEDs. There's basically no limit to how many LEDs Resolume can drive. So whether you're a small stage with one universe or mapping hundreds of universes to LED pixels, understanding channels and universes is the first step to unlocking creative control. If you want to go deeper, check out crazyamazingdesigns.com slash training if you want to check out my one-on-one -on -one training sessions. Also, while you're on my homepage of crazyamazingdesigns.com, check out my new chatbot. Ask it any question and it's gonna find you a solution. Plus, it'll look through my 150 video library to find a great moment for you to learn any topic. Thanks so much for watching, bye.